La 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 la, me 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 me. <laughs> hey, welcome back to another edition of Wednesday Q and A with the Perkins Builder Brothers, where we answer your construction questions. I'm Eric Perkins. This is my little brother, Jamie Perkins. And we're gonna answer some questions about foundations and maybe a couple about railings, which is something we're gonna do, we already did, but the video is coming out Sunday. Last Sunday, if you're watching this on Wednesday. Wow, <laughs> okay, let's dive in. As always, these are completely off the cuff. There is no rehearsing and we don't know the, even the questions till we look at them, so. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to read this. Yeah. Ryan emailed a question in saying, are block walls as good or better or worse than a poured foundation in terms of cost, time to build, and performance? Okay, great question, and thank you for the question. So we use block walls a lot here, and there's a couple reasons that we use block walls. Uh, number one is, uh, yes, they are a little less expensive, but, let me say a huge but, the way we build them. You can't say huge but. No, I can't say that. Cut. The, the, way we, the way we build them is that we actually pour them solid with concrete and we have vertical 5 eighths rebar every two feet in the cores and we use uh, open bottom knockout blocks yeah. every, how many, four courses. Every two feet vertically. Two feet vertically. So we have a grid of that 5 eighths steel. That would be three courses. Three courses. Yep, 24 inches. So we have a grid of 5 eighths steel and then we pour the whole thing solid with concrete. So in the end, our block wall is much the same as a poured concrete wall. The block is simply the form for the steel and concrete. So the reasons we do it, and I don't want to say if it's better or worse or whatever, but we can do the work ourselves. We can lay the block. And I'll let you chime in here. What about other stuff? Cost? Uh, I, don't know, I don't know the exact cost of a poured wall. But something that prevents us from doing poured walls is having all the form work. That's right. We don't know. Now, you, you can hire companies that have all that form work, uh, but then you're stuck to their time constraint. Ooh, yeah. So like we're, we're kind of like, boom, we need to start this wall today. Yeah. You know? So like on the job we're doing now, the day that we got the final okay from the bank mm -hmm. that they had the loan secured, we were already there ready to start building the house. Mm -hmm. And there's no way you could line up a uh, another company to say, all right, I'm gonna call you and in five minutes you need to be there. That's not, not gonna happen. Not gonna do it. So that's part of the reason we use the block. Convenience, convenience is a big thing for mm -hmm. us. We can do it anytime that we want to. And we go above and beyond what code requires as far as filling the block with, with concrete. They call that grouting. grouting. Uh, we go overboard with grouting, complete solid, and we go overboard beyond code as far as that steel you were talking about, doing vertical and horizontal steel, yeah. it makes a really good wall. It does, and we've noticed that even going just to code with the vertical steel, there, there's no horizontal steel required by code on a basement backfilled wall uh, like we're doing. But if you don't put it in there, we've noticed that even in this house that Jamie built, I don't know, I helped you, 10 years ago, we laid this block 10 years ago, or 12 years ago. 14. 14, okay. So you can tend to get hairline vertical cracks yes even in a poured solid 12 inch block wall without the horizontal steel so you i can. really recommend that if you're going to do it yourself i think let's go to the next question wow that was yeah. a long answer yeah you rolling ray i'm rolling ray's our camera guy today say what's up ray Woo! what's up <laughs> he's getting the best angle he always yeah. gets the best angles <laughs> that's why i have ray do it all right question number two coming in from andy via email Oh, Andy's from Ireland. Ireland, eh? Yes, we had a guy that worked for us that was from Ireland for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and he think he moved back to Ireland. No way. Yeah, Dave. Yeah. Have you ever underpinned an existing stone building? If so, how difficult is it? And I'm, you've done something. All right. It wasn't stone. I'll let you answer. All right. I have not done exactly what the question says, but I have replaced a foundation under an existing house. And twice. Well, twice. So. <laughs> It could he be said tricky. He would never do it again. Let's it put it. could be tricky. Now, for example, something around here you see a lot are a lot of mobile homes, and they put them up on blocks. They strap them to the ground, but they have no perimeter foundation. Right. So when I think of underpending, underpending, that's the pending. Pin it's not pending. <laughs> that would be like you're waiting on it. Underpinning. The underpinning, <laughs> where we live, is usually that's what people are talking about. They right. want to have a block foundation 
laid under an existing structure. And it's mainly to block the wind. It doesn't actually support the structure mm -hmm. in that case. Yeah, and, and I, I gotta point out in that case, they're usually like floating because the piers are recessed underneath. Right. So there, there's nothing on the perimeter. So people dig a footing and they, they pour concrete. Yep. And then they lay block up to the bottom of the side. But not for structure, just mainly it's, for looks it's, and yep. keeping cold air. Now, the other thing he's done twice is actually replace foundation that, that the house was bearing on. Yes. And he can give you a couple. The trick is the last row. We'll keep Getting it, it tight yeah. to the structure is difficult to where the structure bears on it when you're done with it. That's right. I, I didn't <laughs> ever figure it out. We were getting to the point of nearly being done and I still hadn't figured it out. And thankfully Arlo chimed in and he had the best idea I had ever heard of. So we, we had to support the structure during the process by putting in piers and jacks and all kinds of things. I'll, I'll stop there. But on the last row of block, you leave room for your mortar joint. You stick the block in, you stick shims in it, and you push it tight to the bottom of the structure. In this yep. case, so you it was tap a, shims in both sides. Yes. So it pushes the block tight to the bottom of the house. You can hammer those shims in really hard if you want to really push a lot of force, but you actually need to be careful because you could put too much up force yes. and you could lift the structure. And then what you do is you grout those joints everywhere except for where the shims are. Then the next day, you pull the shims out, you finish grouting those joints where the shims were, yep. and you have a perfectly tight and flush and weight supporting underpinning. Yeah, it's like a magic trick. I, it blew my mind. <laughs> really? I literally had I laid awake in bed at least a couple of nights thinking, how am I going to get that last row yeah. to push up tight? Because the mortar would sag it if would. you just tried to yeah. do it without shims. It would fall out. And, it in most work. cases, they were using like a cap block as well so that you could get more mortar shoved yep. under it easier because you mm -hmm. had a solid bottom on those blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a real trick and it is a lot of work and a lot of crawling around and digging with like army shovels and, and stuff like that. It so was. yes, it's possible. Um, it's a lot of work, uh, mm -hmm. but we appreciate the question. Yeah, and so that house had a complete stone foundation, by the way. That, that that's what it was. Out. You took it out. We took all the stones out and replaced it with concrete block foundation. Okay, next question. That's it. Question number three on a different topic today, uh, railings. Okay, and this question is actually about baluster spacing. <laughs> and um, on our video that we did about this, I mm -hmm. called the balusters pickets. Right. Instead of balusters. Well, you know when you buy them at the <laughs> hardware store? Does it say pickets? They're called pickets. Well, it's, that's not the real technical name, and okay. I angered the world by, by calling it the wrong name. <laughs> so okay. We'll call them balusters. That, that is the technical name. Okay. And uh, so the question's coming from Amelia via YouTube comment. Uh, aren't you going to notice the different spacings between pickets or balusters mm -hmm. across the panels? And let me preface this answer a little bit. What we did was we had different sections of railing on mm -hmm. this house we're building right now. Each section was a slightly different length, mm -hmm. but we wanted the last picket on each side to come out tight to the posts with an even spacing across the whole section. So we spaced yep. the pickets <laughs> on each section slightly differently. Yes. Will you notice that? Uh, okay, uh, short answer, no, you won't notice. But I wanna say there's two options, and we chose option B. Option A is to make them all exactly the same spacing mm -hmm. and allow the one on each end to be different. Yep. That's one option, very noticeable, I might add. The second option, what we did, we evenly spaced every space. So every gap between every picket is the same in each segment. Now, how much does it vary between segment to segment? Well, less than not a, much. Less than a quarter of an inch. And to you the, cannot detect that, I would say. To the naked eye, you can't see it. You there. cannot tell. You would have to measure them. And and I feel like I got a pretty good laser eye, you know. Yeah. And I feel like nobody is sitting on their deck measuring their pickets. Well, spacings. hopefully we we over <laughs> Ballister spacing, excuse me. <laughs> Get it right. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's that's the short answer. Yeah. I don't think it's noticeable. I don't think we even need a long answer. I think that is the answer. So that's going to be it for today. Thank you for joining us for this uh, Wednesday's edition of Q&A. If you have a question, email us at perkinsbuilderbros at gmail.com or leave a comment in the video. And the comments are part of the discussion and part of the learning. We'll see you next Wednesday. See you. You called them pickets that entire time. You know, Ray, Eric said that he, like, upset the whole world about calling balusters pickets. Yeah. I hope there's not, like, rioting and picketing oh because of it. <laughs> it could be a major problem. Oh, my gosh. Uh. All right, cut. 
Uh, Peter Piper picked a picket, a pile, a pail of pickets, and packed them in his uh, Packard. Is that a car? Picket Packard. Cut.